in this video, we'll talk about even more inequalities. We'll talk about the union bound, complex sets and functions, Janssen's inequality, and Hopkins inequality. So the union bound basically says that on the left, the, the area on the left hand side is less than the area on the right hand side. So the area on the left hand side is the probability of A union B, and the area on the right hand side is the probability of A plus the probability of B. And this inequality is always true because um, there could be overlap, and this overlap only takes away from this area. So the union bound says you give n events. The probability of the union is less than the sum of the probabilities of the events. And you can see that from the picture for n equals 2. Um, and this also actually happens to work for infinitely many events. So I'm going to actually prove the union bound. Uh, you can use, it, use induction and inclusion exclusion, but I'm going to skip over that. So now we need to talk about convex sets. So the sets on the left and the sets on the right have something uh, different between them, right? The ones on the right have this property where I can find the two points and draw the line, and then it would actually leave the set for some for some time here and here and here. So a convex set is one where if I take any two points, okay, um, and I draw the line segment between them, then that entire line segment must be contained in the set. And you can do that for any of the sets on the right here, on the left here. Sorry. Um, also, if you draw using more than two points, like a triangle here, if I draw any triangle, so any take any three points and take like uh, a triangle here, then you know the triangle will always be contained inside um, all of these as well. So a, convex, a set is convex if you take any two points, the line segment between them is contained in S. So how do I describe a line segment? Well, I'm going to use this P between 0 and 1, and that tells me the percentage of the way that I end between X and Y. So if, X, if P is 0, then I just get X plus 0, so it's just X. Uh, if P is 1, I just get Y. And if P is half, then I get half X plus half Y. That gives me halfway between X and Y. Um, so that's what a convex set is. And also, this works for uh, any m points, right? Just like we described earlier, for m equals 3. If I drew the convex polyhedron, that's a complicated word for like, for m equals 3, that's a triangle. Um, if I drew the triangle, the entire triangle would lie inside the convex set. Um, examples of convex sets, uh, the interval, uh, intervals in R, because if you take an interval and take any two points between uh, the, the endpoints, then you connect, draw the entire line. Well, the line segment will always be contained in the interval. For a circle, in R2, if you draw any two points, um, you know, the entire line segment will be contained inside the circle and any n-dimensional box. So now, convex functions, they're very uh, pretty similar. Um, if I draw any two lines connecting two function values, okay, you can see the difference on the left and the right. On the left-hand side, the function always lies below any two points uh, connecting the function values. And here, uh, it's somewhat sometimes above, sometimes below, same here. And this one on the top is special, it's like the opposite of this. This is called a concave function, where the function always lies above uh, any line connecting two points on the curve. So uh, let's try to you know, find the mathematical definition of a convex function. So I have x and y on the bottom. I have my two points, g of x, g of y, on the, on the curve. And I want to say that every single you know, point on the curve is below this line. So here is 1 minus px plus py. That's a weighted average of x and y. And then I apply g to that uh, you know, point. And then I get you know this thing, and then what is the point right up here? This is actually just the weighted average of g of x and g of y, right? This is like somewhere between uh, g of x and g of y, and so the definition of convexity is that g applied to any value, so that's like any point here, is always less than or equal to um, the weighted average of g of x and g of y, which um, which you can see here. Actually, this kind of looks like the expected value of g of x, right? Like the probabilities times g of x, and this looks like g of the expected value of x, and that's going to be interesting to, to see later. Um, so here's the definition we just derived. Uh, again, you can you know apply this to any number of points, not just two. Okay. And yeah, so convex functions include x squared, x, negative log x, e to the x. So Jensen's inequality says if x is any random variable and g is a convex function, then g of e of x is less than or equal to e of g of x. And how do you prove it? It's actually just the definition of convex convexity. On, on this hand, we have like a weighted average pi xi, right? This is the expected value of some x. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the expected value of g of x, right? The probabilities times the g value. And so, yeah, by definition of expectation, this is true. And uh, this actually shows, that for, for example, if g of x is x squared, this actually shows that e of x squared is greater than or equal to the expected value of x quantity squared. And so that, I mean, that's something we knew already, but you can also reprove it with Janssen's inequality. Um, Hofting's inequality, um, I'm going to breeze over that. You can read it yourself, but it allows us to give, a, give us a really strong bound if I know that xi's are be, you know, bounded between a and bi. Um, yeah, again, read this yourself. 